Hi, I'm Samantha Isbray. Uh, our presentation today is about curating and archiving illustrations like those you can see on this cover slide that have been used in dictionaries, in teaching and learning resources. And I'm working with Inga Kral and Jenny Green, uh, where three of us are presenting today, and our colleagues, uh, April Campbell, um, who's given this quote, who's an educator at Tea Tree School in Central Australia, and then Angie Harrison um, from Bachelor Institute, the other person in the photograph here. Angie and April are uh, together with other educators, linguists, interested people at Bachelor Institute today, zooming in. So hi to, to everybody there. So there's an issue with these illustrations that have been made for uh, dictionaries and other resources um, that linguists, educators, uh, resource makers have faced over a number of years. Um, the difficulty of having access to them, of being sure that they're uh, kept safe for the long term. And so a group of us came up, um, thought about this and decided to, to seek out a solution to catalogue, to curate these illustrations um, and to carry out some consultation with illustrators, ensure there are uh, respectful and correct access um, measures and uh, that the pictures are um, archived safely. Um, I'm going to hand over now to Jenny to talk about the genesis of many of these illustrations. So hello everybody. Um, I wear two hats in this project, both as a linguist and an artist. So I'm just going to give a bit of a context for the picture dictionaries that are particularly the ones from Central Australia. The series was originally developed in workshops with Anmajara people, including April and her families in 2002. Our idea was to develop a template that could be used repeatedly by different groups, thus saving time and money by sharing resources. This was particularly feasible with language groups that shared similar ecosystems and cultural practices. So they had the same plants and animals, similar geography and so on. The picture dictionaries add to a suite of language resources that include learner's guides, um, the big encyclopedic dictionaries, and many other things that have been published in the last, goodness, it's nearly 40 years. Um, IAD is the main publisher of these picture dictionaries and there are now many in the series covering languages in the Arandic group, Walpuri and some Western desert languages as well. Picture dictionaries use line drawings, which is what this project is about. And these line drawings have some advantages over photos. They are generally cheap to reproduce. They can focus on particular details of their reference and for human subjects have a degree of anonymity, which is a really important thing in some contexts. So the next slide shows you um, the field notes from the process of producing the picture dictionaries. And this was, um, the process involved field work with the Majra speakers to check the interpretations and suitability of the illustrations by back translating from these visual images to spoken languages. And all of this was recorded. This generated the example sentences used in the dictionaries, but also on occasion some interesting insights into semantics of various words. So I suppose it was testament to the different ways of eliciting language and different um, resources that can be brought to bear on that. New illustrations were commissioned and subsequent dictionary publications generated further ones. As you can see from this image of my field notes, the files or the images had semi-random file names that were allocated, even though they roughly followed semantic domain codes that had been used for Australian languages. As April has said on the first slide, the picture dictionaries have proved to be a very useful and practical resource for the teaching of language and culture in schools. They're very popular and they're very, um, they're very, you know, they're very accessible. So I'll now hold hand on to Inga. Hi everyone. So I'm going to talk about the actual development of the image bank. I was given the job of um, gathering the images, 
working out a system for looking at them, trying to create uh, a, um, a process that would be the segue into archiving. So I was handed a number of folders with images. Some were um, carefully, uh, the, the files were named carefully, other ones were quite random. Sometimes there were duplicates. Uh, a number of images went across different domains. So we had to go through a process first of creating a spreadsheet of uh, all the image names, making sure that we had the scientific names, that we got good metadata for the individual images, that there was um, a coding system that made sense. Then we put, as we see in the next slide, we put the images together and we ended up with uh, 1,353 images across 23 domains with images drawing from seven illustrators altogether and one unknown. Unfortunately, there were a few, despite our um, best endeavors to gather the provenance on the images, a couple of images have come through because we've had such great collections of images of indigenous um, activities or objects or animals, sometimes those pictures have just slipped in with a, uh, into a folder and we're not sure who the illustrator was. So determining the, the exact illustrators for all the images was a big job in itself. We were lucky enough to have interaction with uh, illustrators and, and picture dictionaries from other locations. For example, the Gamilaroi uh, Picture Dictionary, where we were at, got images of East Coast and uh, Western New South Wales and also some images from the Gurunji Dictionary and images from David LeMay from the top end. So that expanded the images way beyond the Central Australian corpus to images that have relevance across Australia in terms of the ecologies, the animals, plants, birds, and the activities and objects used by Indi in Indigenous people in a contemporary uh, mode, but also traditional images as well. So we've, uh, that, long process. That process took about six months of gathering all of those things that uh, meant that we now have a good collection in Lightroom, pass through Lightroom, using Lightroom to um, look for the repeats, to make sure that the file names were correct, to link back to the original Excel spreadsheet, to create a new spreadsheet that was appropriate for Paradisic with a new code name where we called um, the images now the Australian Indigenous Language Image Bank or ALIV for short and that we have uh, a set of source folders where they're carefully linked to what's in, in Lightroom. So what's thrilling about this collection is the 23 domains. The domains, of course, link back to what Jen was talking about in terms of semantic domains that are used in dictionaries and picture dictionaries over time. So building on that, but also expanding for uh, other aspects that are in the, the full collection. You can see in this image from the animals uh, domain that we have beautiful um, range of pictures across different ecologies and across different contexts, both traditional, indigenous and Western. For example, the lovely images of sheep and so on tell us that the people are including images where they might have worked on uh, as stock workers on pastoral stations. And so those, those names, the equating of image and language that there's this um, relationship of these two things are really important where new names have been created for images that might belong to a more contemporary context. So now with our wonderful collection of more than 1300 line drawings that is, is really carefully curated now, we're ready to move into the next stage, which is the archiving with Paradisic and then making these images available to language educators, resource centres, resource creators, linguists. We've already had requests for the images showing us that this is a really valuable process. So I'll hand back to Samantha now. So, um, in fact, the, uh, the importance and the value of these illustrations outside of the, um, the published works that they appear in was evident right from the time the picture dictionaries were, were launched and educators um, took part in workshops to uh, practice different ways of using dictionaries, creating their own resources way back in the early 2000s. And Angie Harrison at the time was uh, a linguist with the department and worked really closely with 
um, teachers in, in a, a whole range of schools in Central Australia. And they did a lot of work compiling those activities and a cousin project to, to this project, the, the Corpus of Illustrations, is revising um, the, the original draft document, the, the Teacher's Guide to the Picture Dictionaries, and creating a new book that is um, more nationally accessible, that's uh, relevant to language situations outside of um, language maintenance situations, um, and creating a teacher resource book for using images and illustrations in teaching more generally, and hence the name of our talk, which is Pictures and Pedagogies. We're just at the stage of getting feedback and trialling activities, trialling the activities, but also layouts, and that's something we're doing very closely with uh, in a partnership with First Languages Australia, in particular, Annalie College. So, to wrap up, um, we're focusing now on, on the next steps. Inga's done an amazing job with, with all of that compiling and cataloguing get, and getting the file naming right. We've got some more work to do talking to uh, the illustrators to make sure we have the access conditions all um, correct. Um, looking at ways to ensure that the metadata stays uh, fixed to the digital object. Uh, we're looking at the ways that communities will be able to access most uh, conveniently and um, easily the uh, illustration bank. And then we're completing the um, teacher resource book. And in these final steps, we're, we welcome all feedback, all suggestions um, from the expertise that's gathered today. Um, and yeah, thank you in advance for your questions. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.